We're calling this video simply obesity. We are told that obesity comes from eating too much and not exercising enough. We are told that we have no willpower or self-control. We are told that most obese people who eat too much will get diabetes. Americans die eight times more frequently from diabetes than melanoma. People become obese despite exercising three or four hours every single day and following the food permit put out by the government to the letter and still gain a lot of weight and develop melabotic syndrome. They become insulin resistant. Look at that picture there where they're pointing us as we're guilty of obesity, that we created this obesity on ourselves. As you can see here in this diagram, sugar, turns into diabetes, and in turn can turn into cancer. You can think of insulin as this master hormone that controls our body, thus with the food it takes in, deciding to burn it or store it. Failure to produce enough insulin is contrary to life, and insulin resistance is when your cells get increasingly resistant to the effort of insulin trying to do its job. Once you're insulin resistant, you're on your way to getting diabetes, which is what happens when your pancreas can't keep up with the resistance and make enough insulin. Now your blood sugar levels start to rise, an entire cascade of pathologic events sort of bends out of control that can lead to cancer, heart disease, even amputation, and Alzheimer's disease. Look at this diagram. You take food in, energy expenditure, the balance of the energy or what isn't burned is stored as fat, and it's that simple. You can reduce your insulin resistance by changing your diet and losing weight. What is the true relationship with obesity and insulin resistance? You can think of insulin resistance as the reduced capacity of our cells to converting food into fuel and taking those calories that we take in and burning some appropriately and storing some appropriately. When we become insulin resistant, the regulation in that balance changes. So now when insulin directs a cell to burn more energy than the cell considers safe, the cell in effect says, no thanks, I'll actually rather store this energy. And because fat cells are actually missing most of the complex cellular machinery found in other cells, it's probably the safest place to store it. So for many of us, about 75 million Americans, the appropriate response to insulin resistance may be actually be able to store it as fat, not the reverse. Getting insulin resistance and respond to getting fat, not the other way around. It is possible that insulin resistance causes weight gain and diseases start associated with obesity, at least in most people. What if being obese is just a metabolic response to something much more threatening, an underlying epidemic, the one we ought to be concerned about? Here in this diagram, it shows about insulin resistance, where in a normal insulin metabolism, uh, it, it gets used up and put into the bloodstream, and insulin resistance is going haywire, and, it's, and it has lower insular glucose. We know that 30 million obese Americans in the United States don't have insulin resistance. Let me read that again. We know that 30 million obese Americans in the United States don't have insulin resistance. That's obese Americans. And by the way, they don't appear to be at any greater risk of disease than lean people. Conversely, we know that 6 million lean, that's lean people in the United States are insulin resistant. And by the way, they, to be, they appear to be at least even greater risk of metabolic diseases. So if you can be obese and not insulin resistant, and you can be lean and have it, this suggests that obesity may be a proxy for what's going on. What if we're fighting the wrong battle, fighting obesity rather than insulin resistance? Even worse, if blaming the obese means we're blaming the victims, what if some of the fundamental ideas about obesity are all wrong? Look at this chart here, metabolic syndrome. Uh, MSY is a combination of risk factors, insulin resistance or high blood sugar, abdominal obesity, belly fat, elevated triglycerides, low HDL, high LDL cholesterol, hypertension, and what are the risks? Risk for diabetes, type 2, 
cardiovascular disease, stroke, fatty liver disease, PCOS in young women. So there's a lot of risk involved in metabolic syndrome, which is a greater risk than obesity itself. It's more like too much glucose, blood sugar. Now we know that refined carb carb grains and starches elevate your blood sugar in the short run. There's even more reason to believe that sugar may lead to insulin resistance directly. Is our increased intake of refined grains, sugars, and starches that drive in this epidemic of obesity epidemic and diabetes? But through insulin resistance, you see that not necessarily just overeating and under-exercising. This is why we have you why you have to start living La Vida Low Carb. Yeah, La Vida Low Carb. This is our new refrain. Viva La Vida Low Carb. Your goal is to maintain normal blood glucose levels. And how do you do that? Cut out the starches. Cut out the cookies. Cut out the bread. Cut out anything that's made from flour. Get out of eating French fries and having potatoes as part of your daily meal. Give up the pasta and the, and the uh, white rice and the, and the long grain rice. You know, they're a great substitute for all the starches. If you would uh, take time, go to our website, at joanbars.com, we have a lot of good information. On saturdaymorningdiet.com, we have uh, wonderful e-courses that you can take advantage of. Please subscribe and share this video with everyone you know. You can change, you can save a life. Go to joanbars.com to get your free copy of the Joan Bars recipe and 10-page report for subscribing. Go to SaturdayDiet.com to learn about our low-cost, e-cost weight loss packages. We'll see you on the next video. Like we said, please share this information, like us on YouTube, and go out there and live La Vida Loca. Bye-bye.